thank you for your blessing. Thank you that I you each day. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. That you are worthy to be the right. And that you are the blessing. the great and lovely one. You are mighty. And in all your words, we give you praise. We glorify you. We thank you for another day. For this is truly the day that you are for you. Thank you. 
to avoid an unseen danger and there's many reasons why we praise and thank the Lord. Because Yahweh is faithful and he is just. And the work that he began on the inside of you, he will complete it until the day of Yeshua Christ on our return.
Well, hello, hello, and welcome once again to Women of Grace. Hello, Sister Janine and all other participants on the line. We'd like to welcome you in our study of preparation of the bride. We have been doing a preparation of the bride uh, workbook, study of Song of Solomon. We started last year. And we are in study three, glory to God. And uh, the the messages of the study has been awesome. It has been a blessing. Um, The Lord has been revealing our hearts to ourselves, to us. Yes, indeed. It's been great. It has been a blessing to come together and break bread together, and not only to break bread, but to sit before the master and hear what the Spirit is saying to the bride. Hi, Sister Janine. Hey, how you doing? I apologize for being late on the line. Um, I'm at the laundromat while we go through the class, and I had a problem with the dryer. My scarf got hung up in the dryer, so I apologize. We got it straight, though. Oh, that's okay. I, I, you know, I had to cook dinner for the grandchildren, and uh, you know, I had to cook within 20 minutes time. And praise God, I got finished with it to cook them something okay. to eat. You know, it, right. it's good that we stay on a schedule because that builds integrity in us and and teaching yes. the children, you know, to have their meal on time. It teaches them integrity. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory okay. to God. You know, God is awesome. He has blessed me this week, and I tell you, uh, as I was studying uh, out out of the workbook, I uh, came to a question, and I began to ask the Lord about it, and we're going to get into that, hallelujah, on one of the scriptures, and and amazing that my daughter, she came and gave me my mail, and it so happened to be something that the book of James that I had ordered, this was a week ago, and it came, and, it, and I opened it up, and it was right at the question that I asked God about. Amen, so God, amen. He, he, he will reveal his word in his time and his season. And, and amen. And we're stuck, he will give us the answer. 
Praise That's the right. Lord. Do we have other people on the line with us today? Hello, oh. Sister Jenny. Why don't you check? Hi. Do we have other people on the line today? Okay. All Go right. For it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, we're on study three, the banqueting house. And uh, for this study, our memory verse is Mark 14, 14, which reads, Where is my guest room in which I may eat with my disciples? We have already done questions 1 through 7, I believe. Okay. Yes, 1 through mm-hmm. 7. Yes. 1 through right. 8. Right. No, 1 through 9. We stopped off at 10. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um and and the book of Solomon is 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 basically a love story, hallelujah, of the right. king Yeshua and the bride, which is the body of Christ, and okay. how he is explaining his love for his bride, and how okay. he wants to draw the bride to himself. Glory to God. So we are on question ten. Tonight, glory to God. And Sister Janine, can you lead us in prayer? Sure. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord God, that you are almighty. You are all wise, all powerful, and all knowing. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the first and the last. You are the beginning and the end of everything and everything in the middle. Lord, thank you that your grace is sufficient for us. Thank you for keeping us all week long. Thank you for your divine holy protection. Thank you that you love us with an everlasting love and you uphold us with the right hand of your righteousness. Lord, your word is spirit and it is truth. Lord God, you said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so, Lord, we need your word. We need your word for daily sustenance. We need your word, Lord. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, O God. When we go astray or when we uh, uh, lean into our own understanding, Lord God, you have given us the blueprint. You've given us directions in your word as to how to address and handle life's situations. Lord, sometimes life challenges us and it gets difficult. But Lord, we can look to you. You are the rock that is higher than we are. And we thank you. You are a sure foundation. You are the plumb line that we need. We bless you. We thank you for the word. We thank you for this uh, lesson tonight. We thank you that Lord God, hallelujah. And you are all the while at work in us, both to will and to do a your good pleasure. Have your way. We uh, decrease, Lord, while you increase mightily in us. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, amen. question 10 reads, what is the requirement in order to commune with the Lord at his banqueting table? And we're going to read Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. And I'm going to read that out, the uh, Word of Yah Bible. And it reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and he will sup, I will, and I will sup with him, and he with me. Many times, glory to God, um, some churches use this particular scripture uh, as a call to repentance for unbelievers. But in this particular case, this scripture is implying to the body of Christ, to the church. And oftentimes the Lord is knocking on the door of our hearts, glory to God. And sometimes we answer and sometimes we don't. Here it describes that the king wants to come in and sup with us. In other words, break bread with us. Hallelujah. And we with him. He wants to commune with us. Now, Revelations 3.20 is not a verse addressing the lost 
but to those who have already been saved. We must remember this. More RRC says, hallelujah, in the Revelation record, this exhortation is directed to compromising worldly believers in the church at Lacedonia and in all other such churches of which there are multitudes today. Hallelujah. Many are going to church, but many are not, glory to God, opening up the heart for the Holy Spirit to come in and interact. Sister Janine, you want to expound on that? Well, um, actually, no. um, I really like the direction you're going in, so I'll just listen in for right now. Did I lose your call? Hello? I'm sorry, Janine. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. That's okay. Amen. Could you hear me? No, I didn't hear you. Can you repeat it? Okay, I was saying, actually, I'm going to kind of fall back and listen to the lesson before I add a comment on that. Okay. Can you reiterate okay. the scripture? Can you reread the scripture, though? That was okay. Revelation 3.20, right? Uh-huh. Revelations 3.20 reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. The king wants to sup with us. And the key point here is that we must hear his voice and open the door to him. When we hear the voice of the Lord, he desires for us to open the door of our heart to him. His knocking also takes the form of prophetic fulfillments and world events in the light of his word. Hear my voice. And in our day and time, glory to God in our air, we are living out prophecy today with the, the, the tragedy that's all over the world. This is the voice of God calling man to repentance. It's a sign of his coming and that we, the bride, must begin to prepare ourselves for his return. Not only to prepare ourselves, but also to draw others in, hallelujah, by how the Lord instructs us. If we recall uh, Yahshua, Jesus, coming to the disciples, and he said, quote, unquote, I would teach you how to be fishers of men. And there's an art of fishing. If you have ever went fishing, I enjoy fishing. (laughs) There's an art to fishing. Just because you put a worm on a hook doesn't mean that the fish is going to bite. Certain fish like certain things. And you have to know what fish, what bait to put on the hook to draw that fish. So Yahshua said that he's going to teach us how to be fishers of men. But we must first hear his voice. It is by his spirit that draws the loss to himself. And us, yielding to the Holy Spirit, will instruct us on what to say to that individual. Whenever Christ draws a soul to his presence, glory to God, he is knocking on the door of that heart, glory to God. But we have to be in a position to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying concerning that individual person. Now, as these are observed, even a lukewarm, compromising brother might well be stirred up to look for oh. the Lord and to believe his word. Amen. See, God is, he, Yahshua, Yahweh, loves the bride. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. He loves all those that have come and received the gift of salvation. Yes. Glory to God. And he desires not only that first time to come in and sup with you, he wants to come and sup with you on a daily basis. Yes. Glory to God. He, he wants to interact with you. But we must first hear the king's voice. We must hear our lover's voice. Glory to God. Yes. Yes. Turn to Luke chapter 12, verse 36. That's Luke chapter 12, verse 36. Amen. And while we're doing that, i got to ask you something real quick about the lukewarm mm-hmm. believer. You had brought up uh, and made a statement about uh, the, this lukewarm believer. Um, there was a time where I know I became lukewarm. And I want to say that Revelation 3 and 20 um, is active in my life, meaning God came after me. Amen. And he pulled me back to himself. Amen. And it is truly a process because what happens when you become lukewarm, um, your heart is hardened, you know? And... So that fallow ground had to be broken up so that I could hear the Lord calling me. Yes. That makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the fallow ground being broken up means that you're getting ready to go through something. Yes. We often look at our troubles and our trials as something real bad and hideous. Now, God allows the enemy to bring trials, troubles, situations in our life, but the enemy for evil, but God will turn that thing around to mean it for your soul good. Notice I said soul good. Glory to God. And when we begin to look at our trials and our tribulations, that's another form of Yahshua knocking on the door of your heart. He wants to come in. Yes. He wants to begin, hallelujah, to prune, to purge, hallelujah, and to begin to remove that dross. We talked about that in another lesson, hallelujah, about the gold. And the silver, how it's melted and how the dross comes up to the top. He wants to remove all that dross that that our souls have been trained into from childhood up until the time we received him. In other words, worldly thinking. Yeah. Worldly concept. Even what we, the philosophy that we've learned in school. Glory to God. These right. things, he wants to remove the world completely from our soul man. Hallelujah. And when the, when the world is removed from our soul man, brothers and uh, sisters, the Holy Spirit is able to breathe now. He's able to input the things of God in, in your heart. In Luke chapter 12, verse 36, and it reads, And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their master when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. The Lord wants you to open up unto him immediately, to be receptive, hallelujah, uh, not only of his coming, but of his voice. That when he knocks on the heart, Glory to God. It's a work that he wants to do in you. Hallelujah. Turn to John chapter 14. Glory to God. John chapter 14. And we're going to start at verse 21. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm heading into the house now, just so that you'll know I'm excited about the lesson tonight. Glory to God. Well, John chapter 14, verse 21, and I'm going to read that out the Amplified Bible. Amen. And it reads, 
The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me, and whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father. And I, too, will love him and will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. Yes. And Judas, not Iscariot, asked him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself, make yourself real to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, if a person really loves me, he will keep my word, obey my teaching, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home abode." special dwelling place with him. Notice it says, hallelujah, that those that love him, that he will reveal himself to them. Those that keep his commands, keep his word, do his word, hallelujah, he will reveal himself unto them. Glory to God. It's a matter of keeping his commands. And that was our very first memory verse in the beginning of our study, that those who keep my commandments, hallelujah, are the ones that love me. Glory to God. And as I thought about that, I said his commands, when you read in the New Testament, Hallelujah, the Ten Commandments, not only the Ten Commandments, but also commands from Yahshua are intertwined within the New Testament. Glory to God. Just because they are not in the form of the tablet when Moses received them does not mean that they're not in the New Testament. Glory to God. And Yahshua says, if you love me, keep my commands, keep his word. And in order for us to keep Yahshua's commands, that means we must read the New Testament. We must read what he taught and imitate what he taught. Glory to God. And he taught not only the disciples and those that followed, hallelujah, him. He taught about kingdom principles. He taught about the kingdom. Not only did he taught, teach about the kingdom, he taught about the enemy of the kingdom. They have to be intertwined. Hallelujah. That the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy anything that you have received in your heart, hallelujah, by the Holy Spirit, because he does not want you to give that, get that revelation, hallelujah, that Yahweh, Yahshua, want to have that intimate relationship with you. Glory to God. So he'll throw in false teachings. He'll throw in false doctrines. He'll throw in everything to distract you from the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, that came to save your soul. And in the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is where you will find the teachings of Jesus, his commands. Glory to God. But we must begin to... Search the scriptures. Listen to what the Spirit is saying when he knocks on your heart. Turn your swords now to Matthew chapter 24, verse 33. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 33, and I'm reading this out the Amplified, it reads, So also when you see these signs all taken together, coming to pass, you may know of a surety that he is near at the very doors. And what signs is he talking about? If we go up, hallelujah, if we go up avert some verses, and, and it talks about the, the, uh, the travailing, hallelujah, of the earth. Glory to God. We are definitely living in that time where there are signs that the Lord is giving us that we, the body, the bride, needs to take 
pay attention to. Hallelujah, that it's time to prepare. The signs began in 2001. Glory to God. And if you notice that there are, they are increasing. The phantom, water shortage, hallelujah. There's different diseases, pestilence, wars, rumors of wars, wars among believers, wars in the church. There's all kind of signs that he, the king, is giving us. And it's telling us that he is at the very door. His coming yes. is soon. Yes. And our focus is, is on other things besides preparing our hearts for his return. Because he is coming, beloved. I have heard lately that many are saying, oh, the Lord, he's, he's not coming yet. Oh, he's tearing. And, and in the gospel, Yahshua spoke about that, that many are not going to be looking for his return that they're going to stop looking for him and start doing other things. And last week, uh, last two lessons, we learned that the enemy would throw distractions our way to distract us from preparing our hearts for the coming king because the signs are plain, beloved. They are plain. Glory to God. It ain't Mother Earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. It's the signs of his coming. The Father, Yahweh, is sending a sign. Some of the seals in Revelation have already been opened. Glory to God. And it's a time for us to prepare for the king. And now we are in his banqueting hall. He is calling the bride into his banqueting hall. And is dealing with uh, the Passover lamb where they celebrate it. Hallelujah. The Passover lamb. Yahshua was the Passover lamb. Beloved, we are getting ready to have another exodus. Hallelujah. When the king returns. He's coming for his bride. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, he is. And you, you, you said something so vital. Distraction. Yes. And another thing. The trick of the enemy is to get the body of Christ to be biting and devouring one another for us to be coming at each other. Yes. It's another form of distraction. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. But we have to pray and ask the Father to open up the eyes of our understanding. Father, I want to see through your eyes and not my own. Because when we're looking through our own eyes, Sister Janine, we can mess some stuff up. That we can true. see some stuff that the enemy places there that is really truly not from God. Right. Glory to God. We are to be learning about Yeshua, about the kingdom. Yes. But but the enemy has infiltrated the church that the focus is turned elsewhere. It's on material things, things of the world. Yes. When our focus is supposed to be on kingdom things, and Joshua said, my kingdom is not of this world. Right. So therefore, our focus should not be of this world. It should right. be on the things of Yahweh, the great I am. Hallelujah. In John chapter 10, verse 27, it reads, The sheep that are my own hear and are listening to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. As we follow Yahshua, Christ Jesus, Yahshua is following the Father. I'm going to repeat that. Mm -hmm. As we follow Yahshua, Christ Jesus, Yahshua, when he walked on this earth, was following the Father. Mm -hmm. He did nothing of his own accord. Right. Everything that he did, he saw his Father doing. Right. And he wanted to do what the Father was doing. And we should do what the, what the Father is doing as well. 
And that is to preach the gospel of salvation. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. About Yahshua came to pay the price for our redemption, that we may be reconciled back to God. Why? Because sin separates you from Yahweh. The scripture says, if I hold iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. Right. I'm going to repeat it. If I hold iniquity, sin, in my heart, God will not hear me. So that means that, hallelujah, we, before we even approach a holy God, We must search our own hearts, beloved, and begin to repent and ask God for forgiveness for those things we are holding in our heart before we even put a petition before him. Yes. Because his ears are closed to sin. Yes. So can you give us an example on the phone? Give Give you a good example. Yes. Give you a good example. Hallelujah. You have Joe, hallelujah, that has, he loves women. Joe is married. Now he knows that committing adultery is a sin. Okay? But he doesn't realize that if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you have already committed that sin. So Joe, he looks at women. He don't see nothing wrong with it. Ain't his, his spirit, he's not grieved or anything. And he lusts. Not really realizing that he has already committed sin in his heart. So when Joe has a need, he goes and prays before the Father, but guess what? Because there's sin in his heart, God won't hear his prayer. Hmm. Here comes the Holy Spirit begins to knock on Joe's heart. Mm -hmm. Joe, he brings him to the scripture where Yahshua says, it is written, thou should not commit adultery. But if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you have already committed adultery. Huh. Joe rereads that scripture again. Mm. And realize that he's already committed the actual act within his heart. The Holy Spirit begins to minister to Joe about the sin he committed in his heart, and why his prayers has not been answered. So Joe immediately repents. King David is a good example. When he sinned with Bathsheba, hallelujah, and sent out, hallelujah, a hit man to kill her husband. He thought that everything was okay. The prophet that God sent to David is a representative of the Holy Spirit coming to a believer to expose what's going on in his heart that you have sinned against God. Now, it's up to us whether we say yea, nay, or the devil is a liar. But God will not answer a prayer if we hold iniquity in our heart. This is why the scripture says, Paul says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, search your heart daily. And if there's anything in your heart that's contrary to the word of God that is coming against the holiness of God or God's uh, righteousness, we are to repent. And ask the Holy Spirit to cleanse our heart with the blood of Yahshua. Glory to God.
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. We must have our hearts right. My sheep, the true children of Yahweh, hears his voice. He said, my sheep, my own hear my voice. And if you are a true sheep of the Lord, you will hear his voice. Even if you have uh, fallen to the wayside, even if you have kind of slipped and fallen short of his grace, you will still hear his voice if your heart is with him. Glory to God. Question number 11 says, uh, reads, describe briefly the provision of the king's table. In 1st King, in 1st King, we're going to go to 1st King, chapter 4, verse 22 and 23, we're going to read. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read that out, the um, Word of Yah Bible. Okay. The first, first King, King four. chapter 4, verse 22. And it reads, And Solomon's provision for one day was 30 measures of fine flour and three score measures of meal, 10 fat oxen and 20 oxen out of the pastures, and 100 sheep besides herds and roebucks and follower deer, and fatted fowl. The king's table was full of delicious things. <laughs> we must, yes, that he provides our bread and gives us strong meat. Hallelujah. The strong meat of his word. Glory to God. Thank God. There is plenty with Glory to God, that he shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory that is in Yeshua, Jesus Christ. He shall supply all that you need, even in the word, glory to God. He shall supply all your needs. And at the king's table, there was much bread and strong meat. And question 12 reads, what type of maiden is this that is able to partake of the meat of the king's table? Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Verse 13 and 14. And I'm going to read that out, the Amplified Bible. Okay, that's where I'm at in the Amplified. Okay. For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness, of conformity to the divine will in purpose, thought, and action. For he is a mere infant, not able to talk yet. But solid food is for full-grown men, for those whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practices to discriminate and distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil and contrary either to divine or human law. You said that's the Amplified? Yes, that's amplified. Mine reads different from <laughs> mine reads different from that. You probably have a different amplified. It's two. Are you online reading it? Yeah. It's two of them there. Look for the second one. Okay. Hold on one minute. What is that? The classic edition, AMPC. Uh, I think so. Okay, let's see. But there's two. Yeah, that's the one. For everyone okay. who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced. Okay, I got it. All right. I looked up the word accustomed to, and, it, and, and the definition is in the habit of or adapted to, commonly used or practiced. 
in the habit of or adapted to commonly used or practiced. Unaccustomed means unfamiliar. Those who but drink milk have no experience of the teachings concerning the righteousness of Christ as it applies to his people, both as input and imparted. They know nothing of justification, sanctification, and growth in righteousness, of the deeper significance of the cross as provider of righteousness and crucifier of the flesh, and thus no knowledge of the high priesthood of Christ. That means you're a babe. This is where our focus should be on the kingdom things of justification, sanctification, growth in righteousness, on the provider of righteousness, which is Christ Jesus, who he's, he's the one that crucified the flesh. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 13 through 15. Ephesians chapter 4, 13 through 15. Glory to God. Amplified. Out of the Amplified. And it reads, that it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God. Matter of fact, Sister Janine, let's go up because some people will get confused of what they're talking about. Here it's talking about the purpose of the gifts. So we're talking about verse 12. Verse through 12 15. through 15. And this okay. is the purpose of the gifts. God did not give us these gifts for ourselves, but for the edification of every believer in the body of Christ. His intention was the perfecting and full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people, that they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the church, that it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at really mature manhood, the completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection, the measure of the statue of the fullness of the Christ and the completeness found in him. So then we may no longer be children tossed like ships to and fro between chance guts of teaching and wavering with every changing wind of doctrine, the prey of the cunning and cleverness of unscrupulous men, gamblers, engaged in every shifting form of trickery and inventing errors to mislead. Rather, let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly. Enfolded in love, let us grow up in every way and in all things into him who is the head, even Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Yes. Here is the purpose of the church. Mm -hmm. It says, scrupulous men, Satan has set men and women in the church to mislead and to deceive you with winds of doctrines, all kind of different teachings that is taking you away from the focus of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Our focus should be on a Christ Jesus, Yahshua, learning who our king is who the lover of our soul is. But mm -hmm. we are focused on every other thing but him. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Verse 14, and out of the uh, net notes, it reads, the result of being full grown in this way will be freedom from being led astray by false teaching because we are no longer children. It is time to grow up. With There's bickering, division, strife, envy, jealousy, competition, all kind of error that's in the church. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they're still children. Mm-hmm. God wants us to come into a, the fullness, the completeness in Christ Yeshua. Mm-hmm. For we are being transformed into his image. We are to be transformed into his image. Mm-hmm. Wind of doctrine. Now, as I was studying this, the word wind of doctrine. Do- mm-hmm. And this okay. is interesting what it says. Prince of the power of the air. Ephesians chapter 2, okay. verse 2. And I'm not going to quote, I'm going to read it to you. And this is referring to winds of doctrine, in which at one time you walked habitually, you were following the course and fashions of this world, were under the sway of the tendency of this present age, following the prince of the power of the air. You were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience, the careless, the rebellious, and the unbelieving who go against the purposes of God. Talking about winds of doctrine, prince of the power of the air, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. And he is working through clever men who, like conjurers, deceive the mind and lead into error with all these strange doctrines that have nothing to do with Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. A babe or still is still carnal. Walking in the flesh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 reads, out of the Amplified, However, brethren, I cannot talk to you as to spiritual men, but as to non-spiritual men of the flesh, in whom the carnal nature predominates, as to mere infants in the new life in Christ, unable to talk yet. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not yet strong enough to be ready for it. But even yet you are not strong enough to be ready for it. And then he later, if you later on explain, he explains it going down to verse 3, why he is saying that they are carnal Christians, they're still babes. And verse 3 it reads, for you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh under the control of ordinary impulses. For as long as there are envying and jealousy and wrangling and fashions among you, are you not unspiritual and of the flesh, behaving yourselves after a human standard and like mere unchanged men? And this is going on in the body of Christ today. Why? Because the enemy has infiltrated the church, weakened the gospel of Jesus Christ, and began to teach false doctrines. Good example. God's not mad at you, but has no scriptural basis on that. The word of God said that he is angry at the disobedient. He hates sin, beloved. Mm. Hallelujah. It pleases him when we obey his word. It pleases him when we are obedient to his voice. He can be pleased. He is not a tyrant. 
He's a God of love, but he is also a God of wrath. And when our king returns, he's coming with a sword in his hand. He's not coming with the lovey-dovey dove type thing that he came when he first came. He's coming to bring judgment upon the earth and upon those who have not received Yeshua as Lord and Savior. The word predominance means be longer, be larger in number quantity, power, status, or importance, appear very larger or co- occupy a, com- a commanding position. In other words, your flesh is dominating. Okay. Okay. It's, it seems like you're do- it, it, it dominates. The flesh is dominating. Hallelujah, the carnal nature is taking predominance over the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. I'm sorry, my volume is kind of low and I don't know how to turn it down. Hallelujah. On here. Let me see. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Glory to God. I'm sorry. That's okay. On this end, I can hear you very well. Okay, yeah, I don't um, know how to adjust the uh, microphone volume. Hallelujah, on here, but I'm not yelling. Yeah, I'm not yelling at you guys. You know, I'm real excited. I'm on fire about this because, you know, God wants us to come to maturity. He wants us to stop all the foolishness. Yeah, yeah. In grade school, we bickered and fight. Not even in grade school. At home, we start at home, brothers and sisters bickering and fighting. (laughs) Then we go to grade school, bickering and fighting. Then we go to high school, bickering and fighting. He say, she say. It's time out for all of that. Paul just said, are you not in the the unspiritual? You're in the flesh? Right. The word mature (laughs) means, it's a verb, develop and work out fully in one's mind. The word mature, develop, and work out fully in one's mind. Glory to God. And for us to be mature in the things of Christ, we must begin to study about Christ. Hallelujah. About the kingdom of our Lord and Savior. The Old Testament was an example for us to see what happens when we rebel. When we worship idols and and lean to false teaching and doctrines, it's an example of how not to be, what not to do. The New Testament is our blueprint to this new Christian walk, what God is expecting in his kingdom, how we are to act, how we are to, to portray Christ Yeshua. Glory to God. Mm-hmm. And it's to be our custom to follow him. Question 12, what type of maiden is this that is able to partake of the meat of the king's table? A, accustomed to the word of righteousness. Christ Yeshua is our righteousness. B, verse 13, not a babe. C, verse 14, mature in the things of sanctification, righteousness, justification, the cross, the provider of righteousness, hallelujah, Mm -hmm. understanding that he is the crucifier of the flesh, having knowledge of the priesthood of Christ. Not, well, God is the one to give man wealth. See, because you came into this world without a dime, and you're going to leave out of this world without a dime. (laughs) And that's the honest to God truth. You came came in this world with nothing, and you will leave with nothing. (laughs) Christ says that we are to lay our treasures up in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt or man can come and steal. Right. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be provided for you. He shall provide what you need. Yeah. He will sustain you. He will keep you. Entering mm-hmm. into the banquet house of the king. Because as we read in Second Kings, First Kings 4, 22 to 23, that he has more than enough to give you. Mm-hmm. And D, verse 14, because of practice, he has his or her senses trained to discern good and evil. Mm-hmm. We must have our senses practice. Our senses are, what is it? What is our senses? The five senses. Yes. Our ears, we, our sight. Yes, our we go through trials and tribulations because mm-hmm. it's training our senses to know the difference between good and evil. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. once again, he's knocking on the door of our hearts. Mm hmm. He wants to come and sit and teach us these things. Mm-hmm. And when he says, I want to come in and sup with you, he wants to come and literally teach you. Mm-hmm. Just like Mary was at the foot of Jesus, we did a study, and we also went through that also where Mary and Martha, Mary was at the foot of Jesus listening to the Messiah. Martha mm-hmm. was busy doing other things. She was distracted with worldly things. Mm-hmm. Mary had the good position. She was learning about her Messiah. Mm-hmm. Christ Yeshua wants us to come and sit at his feet and learn from him. How we mm-hmm. are to be mature. He wants to grow us up. It's time out for being children. My mm-hmm. my grandchildren, oh, and I'm, I can imagine, I can see how God feels. Oh, they bicker and fight all day long. It's nerve-wracking. It's time out. Mm -hmm. It's time out for us grown folks to grow up Mm -hmm. in the things of Christ and ask the Lord to deliver us from false teachings that is being taught today in the body of Christ and that that's why that's why there's so much destruction evil hatred in the body of Christ because we are not being taught the principles and the precepts of God out of the gospels from Matthew from Matthew to Revelation there are nuggets of how we are to live our lives for the king And that's the purpose of entering into the banquet hall, Mm -hmm. that we may feast upon his word and learn the precepts of the kingdom, because Mm -hmm. this sin will not be in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. The word says that when he returns, he's going to, this earth, the earth, physical earth that we live on now is going to be burned up. He's mm-hmm. going to destroy everything that rejected Yahshua. Mm. Wow. And then he's going to reform the earth. Hallelujah. Mm. But we must be prepared as brides. Glory to God. And I'm going to end right there at question 12. Hallelujah. And if anyone has questions concerning, hallelujah, the kingdom of God, concerning our our character, the image of Christ, how we are to be, hallelujah, what it is that um, I need to do, hallelujah, to prepare myself for the coming king, uh, questions and question and answers are open now at this time. Glory to God. Amen. I had a question. If we can go back to question number twelve. Okay. Uh, what type of maiden is this that is able to partake of the meat of the king's table? First of all, there was a lot that had been discussed tonight in this lesson, and um, uh, uh, really dealing with. Me, you know, I don't want to really get into 
what I went through two weeks ago on a Thursday. You know about that. I've already discussed mm-hmm. that. And, um, you know, each and every day uh, God is showing me, you know, the part or the role that I played uh, in that particular situation. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, it just really causes you to repent. It really it causes you to really look at yourself like you're looking in a mirror. Um, you know, I feel like weeping tonight because that that really, you know, hit home for me. I can't talk about anybody else. All I can do is talk about, you know, what God is doing in me. And if I could go back to what we discussed earlier about having experienced being a lukewarm believer and now Mm -hmm. um, the Lord is drawing me back to him, Uh, much of it has to do with what we just learned tonight, you know, being immature in a lot of ways. And I think when we go through life and the storms of life come, and the enemy sends a barrage of tests. Yes. Yes, or he does. It, it could be the Lord, because you said earlier, sometimes the Lord will use the enemy. God will, um, I don't want to use the word manipulate. I heard someone preach that God does manipulate circumstances and situations to get us to where he wants us to be. But he will enter Jack or intervene um, or or allow us to go through certain things to deal with our hard-headed selves. And I can't tell you how I feel right. I want to weep and cry, not because of condemnation, but because it's so real, this, this the process, that we go through uh, the sanctifying process for Okay. It's deep. Yes. You know, and yes. when I when I go through something, and I know I'm the cause of it, I I immediately. I want to God, God, oh, I repent, you know? Mm-hmm. Amen. And, uh, questions I have. How do you know how do you know when you are maturing? Those things no longer agitate you. Okay. You're not, you don't respond. You don't respond um, to those things. Okay. Um, it, 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 it bothers you, yes, but you know to go to the Father and discuss those things. You don't have a response. You're like a sheep led to the slaughter as Christ was. And when Christ was led to court, he was tried before the Sanhedrins and the Pharisees. He said not one word in defense of for himself. Okay. He was completely silent. He had no response. Because he knew that his life was in his father's hands. Right, and this is how Christ wants us to be. And I tell you, Sister Janine, the enemy is really like you said. Since we've been doing this study, we have been tried. We we have been are being Ooh. tried. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. It's Not only by by the Lord, but by the enemy too. But mm-hmm. God wants to mature us in these things. Right, and when right. you have been up under false teaching for so long. And then the Lord brings you out. 
That means you have to relearn the Lord all over again, and the enemy doesn't want that. Right. He enjoyed you having that veil over your eyes. He enjoyed that you being completely blind right. and receiving the garbage that your, your, your soul was receiving. But when that revelation comes, when, when God brings that revelation and begins to reveal the truth to you, there's going to always be opposition. But in that mm -hmm. opposition, God is training us not to respond. And that's the hardest thing to do. Yeah, buddy. Not to respond. Yeah, I got something else I want to say. Okay. okay. Earlier, you talked about the word dross. How apropos mm -hmm. for you to bring that word up because earlier this week, I heard the Holy Spirit say the situation that you are nursing is going to I'm not surprised by it. But what I did is I allowed it to be the dross in you. And then he told me to look up the definition of dross. And it says, um, noun. Are you there, Jackie? Yes, I'm here. Okay, noun. Somebody was on the call. The call dropped. Anyway, dross is a noun. It says worthless or dangerous material that mm. should be removed. There were impurities in the water. Uh, worthless or dangerous materials that should be removed. And then the next definition is the scum formed by oxidation at the surface of molten metal. So it's the dangerous and worthless material or scum that rises to the top. And so it goes back to what you were saying, how God deals with our soul and a lot of the stuff that we find ourselves in, what the enemy meant for evil, God means it for good, and he wants to bring that mess up out of our soul. Yes, yes. And yes. it's ugly. That's all I got. Mm. Yes, exactly. Hallelujah. And he wants to bring that stuff up and transform yeah. us. I'm going to read this um, about maturity. To be completely mature as a Christian means to live an upright, righteous, truthful, trustworthy, honest, and pure life in faithfulness and loyalty to God and his will. Seeking him with sincerity of heart and singleness of mind. God shows all of these characteristics in the way he relates to humans. We are called to be imitators of God. Ephesians 5 verse 1. Our life must show those characteristics as well. Empowered by the Spirit, the call to Christian maturity is not an unattainable dream. Rather, it is a call to be exactly what God intended us to be from the beginning. People who reflect God's glory because we are made in God's image. Our spiritual maturation is a process. Reaching maturity requires hard work from us. But here's the good news. God is doing the most difficult parts of that work in us. Be comforted knowing that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. We will be fully matured only when Jesus returns. In the meantime, growing maturity and holiness are exercised by the, by the way we respond to God's word, relate to other people, especially the poor and the weak, show self-control and restraint, react to trials and temptations. He wants mm -hmm. to mature us. Glory to God. God will give you what you need. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. To walk the Christian walk. 
Mm-hmm. It is not a bed of roses. Hallelujah. But it's a glorious walk when we know that the Savior is by our side, that he has our back. And even as Jesus told Peter, Peter, Satan wants to shift you. Yeah. But I pray that your faith fell not. Right. Christ did not rebuke Satan, but he told Peter that I'm praying for you that your faith yeah. does not fail. And many of the the believers in church today believe that they are exempt from the temptations and um, the touch that Satan can't touch them. The scripture I just quoted comes against that teaching. Because if you have changed your alliance from the kingdom of darkness and changed it to the kingdom of light, there is going to be opposition. Glory to God that we will suffer for the king. So I thank you for joining us once again, women of grace, in our study, hallelujah, preparation of the bride. And next week we're going to uh, continue our study, part three of study three from questions 13, 13 to 15. Uh, Because, you know, we work, all of us work, and sometimes we don't have enough time to really sit down and study the Word. So that's why I'm breaking it down in sections. Um, Hallelujah. But we're going to do questions 13 to to 15. Hallelujah. And Sister Janine, um, I would like to assign that to you. Questions again. uh, Questions 13 to 15. Okay. Questions 13 to 15. With well, okay. glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you would like to know more about Women of Grace, please write us at womenofgrace at disciples.com. Womenofgrace at disciples.com. If you would like prayer, please let us know. And we, uh, Sister Janine and I, will be lifting you up in prayer. Hallelujah. Because it's all about the body of Christ, and we want to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for the great work that you are doing here at Women of Grace. We thank you for the word, O Father, that you have given to us, O Lord. We thank you for revelation into the king's chamber and that, that you invited, invited us into your banqueting house. We thank you for the food and the meat that you have set before us, O oh Lord God. And Father, we will meditate upon what we learn today, O oh Father, throughout the week. That we may, be, that we may grow up, O oh Lord God, and begin to do those things that you have called us to do. We thank you, Father, that we are no longer children that are tossed to and fro by all kind of do- teachings and doctrines, O oh Lord God, by man. But that, Father, we want to hear your voice. We want to learn from you, Yahweh. Thank you, Lord, that we are the sheep of your pasture and that we hear your voice, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord that we can come boldly before your throne of grace and that we can find help in time of need, O Lord. Father, I thank you for Sister Janine, O Lord, and I ask, O Father, as you continue, Lord, to open up our heart, Father, as you continue, Father, to sup with her, that you, Father, will pour out your, your oil that will bring healing, that will bring comfort, And that the blood that you shed for her will cleanse her and wash her because she is your bride. Thank you that you are her provider and that you make provisions for her on a daily basis. Thank you, Father, that she knows that you are her husband and that you will watch and care for her. Thank you, Lord that you make provisions for her. Thank you, Lord, that 
You take her up on your lap, O Lord, and that you hold her and that you whisper in her ear that you understand what she's going through and that you give her strength in her inner man that her inner man will be able to stand the trials, the tribulations, the persecutions, the hatred for man, O oh Father, that she will be able to stand, Lord, in your promises and on your word, that you are faithful, that you are just, and that you will deliver her from her enemies. Thank you, Father. For the blood of Yeshua that cleanses her and washes her from all unrighteousness. We love you, Father. We love you, Yeshua. And we thank you for another day of being in your presence. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. And may the Lord keep you. May he wash over you. May his face shine upon you as you continue to seek his face and sit at his feet and learn from him. God bless you and shalom.